What is going on, guys? Today, we're going to be doing a guide on Melina. All right, so first things first, before we talk about her moveset, before we talk about phase one or phase two, before we talk about some text that we do in this fight and maybe how you can make it easier on yourself, let's talk about two key mechanics that this boss has that no other boss in Elden Ring has had so far, at least that I know of. So Melina, she has two things. The first thing is she heals when she deals damage. It doesn't matter if she hits you, if she hits your summons, if she hits anything, she's getting healed. And that leaves a double-edged sword because if you go in and attack her, sure, you can do some damage, but what if she heals back up and she hits you and then you take damage and then she healed back up all the damage you dealt to her? That's the first thing. Uh, it's very frustrating, very annoying, but it is doable. You have to pick your window of opportunity and when you want to strike. And a lot of it's going to have to do with staggers, And but we're going to go on into all that here in a little bit. The second aspect is her air barrage, raid, attack, whatever you want to call it. It is the hardest thing to get out of, and it's almost a guaranteed death. There's only really two ways to survive this, is to miss the complete barrage itself by running away as soon as you see her do it, or using one of the shields, the golden shield, uh, I forget the name off the top of my head, but it's the only two ways to really survive it. Uh, other than that, you're not surviving this thing at all. It does so much damage, uh, it's absolutely obnoxious. It's the two main aspects that you'll realize right away, uh, whenever you go into this boss in the first place. All right, so now let's talk about the rotation and kind of the mindset you want to go into this fight. So as soon as you enter the door, you want to spawn your Mimic and then heal yourself. And then you want to put the ice on your weapon. And then you want to let your, your Mimic engage first. And you always, always, always want to try to get behind Melina. Because all of her attacks are frontal. She has some wide arcing attacks, but most of them are relatively straightforward in going towards the, the minion, the mimic, or whatever you want to call it. And then you want to jump attack and stagger her as much as possible. Put her in an endless loop combo where your mimic attacks and then you attack. Your mimic attacks, you attack. And that is the safest and easiest way to really kill her and do a lot of damage as possible. You have your ice proccing, you have the bleed proccing, so there's going to be two big burst combos that can really deplete her health quite a lot. Whenever she attacks you, you want to play a little bit defensive. You want to move away, be sure to dodge at the correct times. But you want to make sure that your Mimic is taking pretty much full aggro as much as possible. But on the other hand, your Mimic is your lifeline. You have to protect him as much as possible. If Melina is smacking your guy around, you best go in there and knock her upside the head. Because if he dies, your run is over. But it's not only the defensive aspect that the Mimic provides, but it's also the offensive one. Where you can get her into a stagger, get her into a 5, 6, 7, 8 hit combo, have your bleeds proccing, have your frostbite proccing. If he is dead, your run is dead, like I said. But now we're going to get into her moveset, and then we're going to go into some texts and strategies uh, that I use that kind of worked for me. Here is a few of her common moves she uses in Phase 1. So the first move that you need to notice right away is the Aerial Barrage Assault. This, what it does, is she launches up into the air, puts the sword behind her left shoulder, and then she'll come swinging for the fences. If you can get out of the first initial barrage of attacks, then you can roll dodge and hopefully miss some of the second one. And she'll hit you with some of the third one as well. But having so much max health that we have, you can actually survive some of these. And this is how I actually beat this boss, is by surviving this aerial barrage attack. So after the first and the second of aerial barrage attack, she'll go into the third one. The third one has another mechanic on it as well, is after it's complete, it'll shoot, send out a shockwave around her, and that'll deal quite a bit of damage. So if she's doing this on your mimic, be sure to wait for this and then go in and attack her. So this next attack, we're going to call it the Skyward Slash. Now it has a two-hit combo. And I, what I recommend, if you see this one, you want to strafe to the right-hand side of your screen or to the left side of her body. So basically what she does is she'll pull the sword kind of right up into the air and then her arm will click. You want to strafe to the right and the skyward slash will come towards you, but it'll be too far away from you. It'll be a little bit on the left of you. Uh, and then, then she'll twirl around and then shoot another one. So you want to roll dodge twice and be sure to do that so you don't get hit. So for the next attack, I'm gonna call this the pirate slash. It kind of reminds me a lot of Pirates of the Caribbean. But what the attack does is she kind of puts her sword in front of her and does three little quick attacks. And then she pauses for a second and then does the fourth one. So it's three attacks in the initial barrage and then it's a pause and then the fourth attack. 
if you maintain good spacing, you really don't have to worry about this skill too much, but your your mimic will be getting hit with this more often than not. But if she turns around and auto locks onto you, basically you just full sprint away from her and she really can't hit you as long as you have some good spacing. It does have some good tracking though. If you are relatively close to her, what you want to do is dodge the initial. You will get hit by the third strike in the initial barrage. That is okay. It doesn't deal too much damage, but then you want to roll dodge the fourth one or you're going to take a, quite a bit of damage at that point. You will get hit and you will get roll caught on that third initial attack if you are very, very close to her. So the next attack is a quick step into a slash. Now this has several different variations of it. She has so many different types of combos that comes off of her dodges. But this is a common one that you'll see is a quick step into two slashes into a pierce. So you'll want to roll dodge the first one and kind of keep moving back off the second one. And then she'll go into a pierce. You want to roll dodge into her at the correct time and you'll completely miss all the damage. And then you can go into a counter attack with a jumping heavy. So this next attack is one of her most powerful in her move set. Basically what she does is she will do a quick step attack and then she'll do a slash. She will pull her hand behind her on her left side and then she'll go and grab your neck, throw you in the air and you'll land on her sword and take a massive amount of damage. She's very sneaky about this. You have to be on the lookout for it. So basically what you do is you want to roll dodge toward yourself. So as you're looking at yourself from the camera view, you want to roll dodge towards you where you're looking at your character. Oftentimes, she can roll catch you if you roll dodge the opposite way towards the left because her her hand slashes across her body from the left to the right. So if you're roll dodging in anywhere in that direction, you can get grabbed. I'll let you have an idea of some of her common attack chains. I can't go over every single one or this video will be like an hour long. But now let's go into some strategies I suggest in phase one so we're going to get into everything into phase two here in a minute this is strictly about phase one so phase one is relatively easy compared to phase two so in phase one what you want to do is you want to focus on staggering her as much as possible you want to absolutely berate her with attacks to where she just gets staggered she goes on her knees and then you give her a nice little gut punch that is the easiest way to do this it's one of the weirdest bosses as it's high risk and high reward. So you want to be really aggressive when she's attacking your mimic, but you want to play passive whenever she's attacking you and you want to roll dodge accordingly. Also, another tips is you can get her into a corner and get her next to the wood uh, and the edges of the area and just absolutely berate her with attacks and your mimic will do the same thing. You can get quite a bit of damage. Now, sure, you can get hit a few times, but overall, the damage you're going to get from your bleed and from the frost is you're going to overwhelm her to eventually wear her healing isn't really going to matter because you deal so much damage. Now, this will take some practice, but eventually you will get phase one down relatively easily to go into phase twos quite a bit more often. And this is where the fun actually really begins. So when phase two begins, she will be in the air and she'll come down like a meteor and smack to the ground. Be sure to run away as fast as possible because when that explodes, it deals massive amount of damage and it can one shot you. The little poison pebble things can do the rot damage to you. It could take three or four ticks and then you could be dead. So don't run in there too quickly. You kind of need to time it correctly. Now, once she gets out of her flower, she has the same access of abilities in phase one as she does in phase two, but they are much more difficult to read as she has these butterfly wings uh, on her back. So they're much more difficult to see any of her sword swings or animations. She still has her tornado death wind, which we actually do survive somehow in this clip. I just couldn't believe how we actually didn't die. So one of her new moves in phase two is the butterfly kick. Basically these butterflies come out of her wings and come and punch you and kick you in the face. That's pretty much what it does. It's very difficult to dodge and I feel bad for you if you get this RNG. She doesn't do this too often. It's similar to the grab your neck and throw you in the air type of thing, but it still can kill you. You basically just want to bum rush her to death so this doesn't even happen. And yep, that's still a thing. But guess what? We have so much HP, it doesn't one-shot us, so we're good. The strategy in Phase 1 is the same strategy in Phase 2. You want to bum rush her to death and just stagger her as much as possible. Do those spamming jump attacks. You want to stay on the outside of the pedals, and then you want to come in as soon as they start to fall. You may take one or two ticks from the rot, but that's not going to kill you. And it'll actually optimize your damage. You really want to focus on damage in this phase, as you really need to secure the kill as fast as possible. 
let the mimic take the aggro, and then you just come around behind her and smack her in the head and get a few saggers and then do the backstabs. When she goes into the flower bloom, you want to make sure you run away, stay on the edge, get again, and wait for the flower blooms to come down. Go in there and optimize your damage. Just bum rush her, spam, spam, spam. And then this is what will happen. And you will be so happy when you beat this. This is literally like six or seven hours of me trying this over and over and over again. That is pretty much it for the guide on how to defeat Millennia. I honestly think she is the hardest boss in Dark Souls history. The biggest tip I can give you guys is don't get discouraged. Keep at it. I promise you, you'll be able to get it. I'm going to explain what I have on when I'm running. But I think that's very important because this is the only boss... So far in Elden Ring, I've had to actually change my build and adjust it. Let me go over what I'm running. So I have the Bloodhound's Fang plus nine. This is one of my favorite weapons. This is, I've already done a guide on this weapon on how to get it. This is one of the best starting weapons in the game, in my opinion. It's a great uh, deck scaling um, weapon. It's got a good move set. You can buff it with, you know, frost and all that. So it's just a great overall weapon. I tried the rivers of blood it just didn't cut out the damage we had to go with two cheeses of the bleed effect with a bloodhound plus the ice which helped a ton this is so good and so valuable on this boss he's running the ice uh consumable grease it really helps but i ran bloodhound plus nine i tried the halberd a long time ago it just didn't work the only success i really had was with the Bloodhound's Fang plus nine. I tried going just sh blocking because I looked up a guide on it online. They said they went with the Golden Great Shield. It worked, but I could get so much more damage from this thing going decks. I was actually a a uh, quality build for a little bit, but I just decided just to go with full decks and just bump up my damage as high as possible. For my gear, we're running the heaviest gear we can get. We have to get as tanky as possible. The tankiest gear you got. Uh, some of this is from, you know, exploring and whatnot, but this is some good gear. From my talismans, we went with Redrong's Scar Seal. I think there's a better one, but I just haven't found it yet. This is just a basic. Increases our attributes by plus three, which is very good. Uh, the Great Jar's Arsenal for maximum equip load because we're running such heavy gear and a pretty hefty weapon. And then we're running the Medallion plus one. I think there's actually a better medallion uh, because here's a plus two for stamina. But you want to pump your health as high as possible. She has some one-shot mechanics. Well, kind of one-shot. If you don't have as much health, you're going to get one shot. So I just literally decided to go full max health. And then for my other talisman, the claw one, this is great. Uh, this is so, so good because you can stagger her quite often with this. It really helps your jump attack damage and all of that. So for my flasks... You could go with 11 healing and 2 uh, with with the blue flasks. Because I was trying out the Rivers of Blood. Um, but I just never changed it or adjusted it. For my Wondrous Flask. I went with Restore Half of my Maximum Health. And Raises my Max HP. This is the best. Remember, stack your health as high as possible. That's just how you have to fight this boss. For my stats. 53 Vigor. 13 Mind. 30 Endurance. 18 Strength. Uh, it's actually lower than that. Well, let me take off this thing so you can see my basic stats for this is here. So before my things on there, we're at 50 Vigor, 13 Mind, 27 Endurance, 15 Strength, 60 Dex, 9 Intelligence, 9 Faith, 10 Arcane. And a few of those I have just because my other spec and my quality build, I used uh, some enchants like with, with Faith. But yeah, so that's the build pretty much in a nutshell. To wrap up this video, I'm going to show you the full uncut, unedited version of me killing her from beginning to end with me not talking. I guess you guys don't want to hear me talk anymore. But that's it for me, guys. I hope you have a good rest of your day, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.